Jimmy. My name is Jimmy Morrison, and I dropped out of college in 2006 to... Well, that's a good start. <laughs> uh, I dropped out in 2006 to pursue a career in film. I actually had an economics teacher in high school who let me uh, spend the entire semester sitting in the back row of his class writing a script instead of learning economics. And then in the week uh, leading up to the AP test, he taught me AP macro in like six days. Uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful to him. Um, but uh, I, at the same time that I dropped out, uh, I started a house painting business, and it just happened to be the month that house prices peaked in 2006 and so I raised almost ten thousand dollars to make it and I never quite finished it to be honest but it was basically my film school was like learning by experience and so that's why I started the house painting business was because I wanted to use uh, the painting profits to fund my projects because I knew people weren't gonna just give me money to make my little <laughs> projects that I wanted to do and so I saw the bailouts in 2008 and then I saw Obama doing the same things and so I decided to get back into economics and so so I did a torrent search for just the word economics. The first thing that came up was an audiobook of economics in one lesson that the Mises Institute had put out. If they hadn't done that, who knows? I may be working for the Federal Reserve, but <laughs> probably not. Um, so from there, uh, I, was, I worked on Gary Johnson's presidential campaign in 2010 and 2011. And having read Henry, ha or having listened to Hazlitt, uh, basically described the way our crash played out, uh, you know, 70 years later while I was, paint I was literally painting a house listening to it. Uh, it just kind of gave me the idea that like, you know, I want to be able to fund these film projects with my entrepreneurship, but if I get caught up in the next bubble, you know, I won't be able to do that. My idea was to track down the people who predicted uh, the housing crisis, ask them why it happened, and more importantly, ask them what's next. And so Gary Johnson actually encouraged me to quit his campaign and pursue this, and uh, I did. I'll, I'll tell you one story about Gary. He actually asked him once if there were any politicians, you know, from before Ron Paul that he recommended I look into. And he said that, uh, no, every single one of them disappointed uh, him. And one day, uh, Gary would disappoint me. And so that's just my... <laughs> But I, I like Gary, I just, man, Bill Weld, I cannot stand that guy. Um, so that around that time, uh, October 2010, uh, I pitched uh, Tom Woods on the project, and he was gracious enough to come on board and help me write it. You won't hear, hear words like Republican or Democrat in these. They're more looking at what caused these things, what caused the housing bubble, what caused bubbles. I would eventually drive over 35,000 miles interviewing all these people. And thankfully, I haven't had to do this recently, but when I first started, I was sleeping in Walmart parking lots in the back of my little Pontiac Sunfire car. And I was so like nervous about meeting these people. I would literally wake up in the morning, open the door, puke out of the car, go inside, get cleaned up, and then I would drive to where the interview was, and then I would have to stop at a gas station, go in, because you can't do it at Walmart because the environmentalists won't let us use kitchen sinks anymore or bathroom sinks. And so I would have to stop at a gas station where you're more likely to get that. And I would wash uh, my hair in the bathroom in the gas station sink. Uh, and then I'd go interview people like Mark Faber and Jim Rogers, who are like some of the best investors of all time. They have the track record uh, in the Austrian School of Economics of predicting the housing bubble, the internet bubble, the SNL crisis, the Great Depression, the stagflation of the 1970s. I think it's time that we look at these uh, Look, look at these beliefs that they have and see how they were able to see these things coming. 2012, we premiered a t teaser at Freedom Fest. I promised that the film would be out by the end of the year, and it's not out yet, so you can see how that worked. Um, but we were able to gain some momentum and really grow the project, and we realized that it, it could be something more than something that just academics would look at or something that just Austrians would look at. We really thought we could reach um, the general public if we spent more time on it. Uh, it obviously took me way longer than I'd hoped, but uh, you know, basically, like when you envision a project, right? Like you, you see it like this. You're down here, and it's up here. But the reality is, you just keep trying and keep trying, and you just inch up the most you can to get there. You know, and so I just kept doing that. Uh, I swore I would have the movie out before I got married. End of 2013, I got married. Um, <laughs> And then uh, the next year, something uh, happened that really, you know, you wouldn't think it'd be a big deal. Um, but Robin Williams died, and it really made me, like, consider, like, what I was doing with my time. And the fact that due to some court decisions, uh, he had to 
give a lot of money to ex-wives. Uh, he had to take a lot of projects and do a lot of work he didn't want to do. And so it really made me realize like I shouldn't rush this movie. I shouldn't just get it out and try to make a quick buck. I should try to make something that's going to last beyond uh, after I die. We really spent a lot of extra time trying to make this film accessible to the general public. As you see, we use lots of cartoons, lots of pop culture uh, and comedy as well to try to make it something the general public uh, can understand. And so the next year, even though I promised that I would not have a kid until the movie was out, I had a kid. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't teaching my kid that like changed my life. It was watching my kid teach herself. Um, she taught herself English. Like, how cool is that, you know? Uh, so anyway, that kind of gives you guys a little background on who I am or whatever. And uh, we're coming up uh, November, I'm going to have my second child. So that means that uh, if I'm not going to fail, I have to put the movie out. So the movie's coming out in October. The reason I'm telling all you guys about all these failures that I've had is because it's easy to see like this finished product product and just think wow that's awesome that he did that but I just really want you guys to realize like it I just failed over and over again like over and over again for years and years and everybody told me like why are you wasting your time on this like clearly just put it out and if you make money you make money but uh, I'm really proud of where where it's come most people in the general public can sit down and watch that and learn a whole hell of a lot about economics um, and even if you don't agree with all of the things in the film as far as the Austrian economics and that sort of thing, uh, it's something where it's a starting point. Whereas people right now, they have all these short conversations and Twitter posts and Facebook posts. You really can't get into the stuff that's this complicated without having like a base of knowledge. And so what the film does is it allows people that believe in free markets um, to sit down with family members or friends and watch the film and then they can start the conversation saying, okay, I know that you know at least this basic stuff. What did you disagree with? What do you agree with? And then they can start the conversation point from there. So the first film, The Housing Bubble, looks not just at the cause of the housing bubble, but it goes back over the Great Depression, the Depression of 1920, the stagflation of the 1970s, so uh, that people can learn about the history of, of these bubbles, and of course, the Federal Reserve. Uh, the second film starts with the, uh, the bailouts in 2008, and uh, brings it up to today. It's been like, you know, seven, eight years um, of research. And what I've really come to the conclusion is, I don't know, you know, I don't have the answers and these people don't either. They make mistakes just like everybody else. And when you have an economy with millions of people, there's just no way to know what decisions they're all gonna make. And all we can do is try to look at the policies and look at what their effects are and their consequences. We really tried not to look at anyone's intentions in the film. Uh, we tried to make it more of an economics thing. During this time, I, you know, I struggled with like depression and, and things and I really like, you know, because my friends and my family are close to me, obviously I value them more than other people's opinions. And so I really like thought it was super important that I changed their minds. And if I couldn't change their minds, it didn't matter whoever else's minds I changed. So I want to encourage you guys to be aware of that and, and not do that because um, uh, my dad actually, uh, in the last few years, developed dementia. And when your parents die or your parents get sick, like, it doesn't matter. Like. You know, like they could support uh, nuclear weapons. It doesn't matter. You just want to take care of them and have them be at peace and uh, feel happy. And so I, I'm not encouraging you to not like talk about these things. Uh, my dad actually listened to Joe Salerno's intro to micro class while we remodeled our basement. So like, how could I be mad at that guy that was willing to like listen to and all those economics lectures? But you know, I really treasure those memories because it was like one of our last intellectual pursuits together. Um, my grandpa actually ran for office twice in the 80s, and he always told us when we were kids that he lost by 100 votes one of the times uh, for state senate. And he actually told us losing that election was the best thing that ever happened to him because he then went and spent 30 more years in the private sector uh, working for nonprofits, working for companies, and he actually. Uh, he, he volunteered for a company that would take uh, retired business executives and they'd help people write business plans. And that's how I wrote my first business plan. Um, so he actually died last month and he never got to see the movie. One of the last things I told him was that it was finished and I was gonna bring it over for him to see. Um, so it, it's kind of like a balance, you know, like you don't wanna just work on Austrian economics all the time and you don't wanna just hang out with your friends all the time. But I really, um, on top of all that, uh, 
tonight is actually the one year anniversary of uh, when I got in a car accident. So not only did they not get to see the movie, it was very, very close to nobody ever seeing this movie, even after all these years. Um, I Both my lungs were punctured, I had a concussion, stitches, I, my airbags didn't go off, and I uh, hit a pole going 50 miles an hour. I actually had passed out from uh, I was driving and I pushed a hernia back in because I didn't know what it was and I passed out from the pain. And so I know that's like really heavy guys, but like <laughs> my point is this, like, you know, you got to keep showing up when you fail. You got to find balance, but play with your dog, you know, like hang out with your friends, be friends with your parents, uh, fall in love, have kids. Just keep showing up, keep failing, doing what you guys do what you guys are already doing because I've heard about so many awesome projects that you people are working on. I'm so excited to see what you guys all do next. And most importantly, buy my movie at thebubblefilms.com. <laughs> <laughs>